All right, so after reading the instructions, I didn't see anything that made me concerned that I was gonna injure myself, but it told me about updates. It told me about connecting it to the vehicle. I just took the top off of here and I'm gonna connect it to my OBD port. Most cars in the US are gonna be under here. I already know where it is, right about, um, right about here. Normally I'm inside the car when I do it, but go underneath the dash, find my OBD port, which happens to be right here. Plug that in and it only goes one way. So you gotta turn it the proper direction. There it goes, booting up. And system verifying, please wait. Vehicle is not turned on. Launch, create, change. Diagnose. It is not touchscreen, which is fine. I'm gonna hit okay. OBT D2. Uh, so I'm just gonna go through each setting so we'll see what they are. So processing. Tell me a little bit about that. Entering system. My vehicle is not on. I just have this plugged in. And so I think that's the reason why we're getting fail, fail, fail. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, turn the vehicle on. And then I expect to see the results that you know I would expect to see. So let's do that. All right, so I wanted to adjust this to US reading. So I'm gonna go to settings. I'm gonna go to language and English is what I want. And then I'm gonna go to, okay, I guess I gotta hit escape. Units of measure, and I want imperial, okay. And escape, beeper is fine, record mode, and on, okay. On or off, okay. And then I'm gonna go back to diagnose over here. Not a touch screen, so go over. Hit that, so I go over to scan, hit okay, and it's gonna allow me to pick my vehicle. So all the different manufacturers are in there. I got a Nissan Frontier. So I'm gonna go over here, Nissan, hit okay, and Nissan, not infinity. And I'm gonna do manual select because I went to automatic and it'll test all these things. So it's engine, ABS, BCM, airbag, all these different things. There's uh, 64 different items, air pressure monitor, rear view camera, some of the things I don't even have, motor assist, uh, cluster, HVAC. Uh, let's try our HVAC, what the heck, why not? So let's see what happens here. I'll just wait for that to come up. And fault and communication with this vehicle is armed with the system, the system is electrical control system, diagnostic indicator is okay. This is which is on. So I don't know. Um, it has all these different diagnostic processes. So let me go back home. Go back over to here to OBD. And it's checking everything right there. And readiness completed, readiness not completed, zero readiness not supported to, data stream supported. So I'm hit OK. And then read codes. As I mentioned before, generic uh, circuit sensor, bank two, cam camshaft position sensor, I got to change. And those are the two. So I am readiness. This fire is okay. So these are all the different things that we looked at before. And most of the things are okay. And then data stream, uh, view graphic items. And I'll hit okay. So yep, it has all the graphs. Let's see what happens when I hit the gas a little bit. So like I say, I'm no expert or mechanic here, but uh, there's some really, really cool stuff in here. I can select what items I wanna see. And I can pick something, load value, fuel system status. Let's try that. DSC to confirm. So that's clear. Exit that. Freeze frame, O2 sensor test. Let's do it. 
Bank one, sensor one. Okay. The vehicle does not support this. Okay, bank one, sensor two. Uh, minimum sensor voltage, voltage, maximum sensor voltage. So it gives me that. Okay, passed. Maximum sensor voltage passed. So that's bank one, sensor two. So I'm gonna go to bank two, sensor one, which is I think where I have the issues. Vehicle does not support this. Bank two, sensor two. Again, minimum and maximum is passed. So, I mean, there's just tons of onboard monitoring here. Catalyst monitor bank one or bank two. Min and max. There's just so much here. EVAP monitor, fuel system, misfire checks, catalyst monitors, variable valve timing. There's 21 different items here. Um, EVAP system tests. And I'll hit OK. Evaporative system leak test failed. Interesting. Vehicle information, that's just gonna tell you about my vehicle. Escape of that. I am readiness, we talked about that. Onboard monitoring. So there's just tons and tons and tons of features here that I think this thing it's just really cool. Like I say, I, I'm not the expert at understanding all this. So, uh, you know, I'm just kind of show, sharing this more so that people can see more of what, uh, what, what this thing has. So let's do view all items on data stream. And there you go. You can get all your, all your information. Load value 19.6. I'll hit the gas. See that jumping around. Short term fuel trim. Engine temperature. Coolant temperature. Yeah, long-term fuel trim, subtracting point eight, uh, 0 0.8. Uh, Short-term fuel trim, adding 5.5, 3 to 5. Um, like I say, it's not running super smoothly. Uh, long-term fuel trim bank two, 4.7%. So I think that's the issue is the difference between those two. Engine RPM kind of bounces around a little bit because of, uh, I think, the throttle body. Vehicle speed zero, zero, ignition timing, intake air temperature, airflow rate, absolute throttle position, 1.6%. Now if I give it some gas. Uh, oxygen center output, output range, short-term fuel trim, again, going back 16 to 20, 21 to 25 out of 43. There's all your different items there. Uh, 26 out of 30. And 31 to 35, 36 to 40, and then 41 to 43. So these are all the different data streams that you get. It's just it's just beyond uh, you know beyond the things that I would generally be using. But definitely, if I was a mechanic and really understand stood this stuff better, I would have to say I'm very impressed with this. So let me know what you think in the comments below. Um, share your thoughts of what kind of unit you use, uh, what things that you saw, if you're familiar with vehicles more than I am, that would make you maybe uh, pause or have concern. I think I need a new throttle body. That might be the issue with my vehicle. I have no trouble with uh, the check engine light if I just drive for a long time. I've cleared it, driven from Tennessee to Florida, no issues. <laughs> as soon as I kind of slow down and stop. So I think it's just the throttle body slightly open at, at idle and that might be the problem. And uh, yeah, but this thing has more information than I would ever can even begin to imagine using. So really like it. Let me know what your thoughts are and we'll see you in the next video.